Field day, field day, field day! Yay! <laughs> hey everybody, KC0VII, Tom. This, this is KD0TLJ. We uh, are going up to the Austin, Minnesota area to be with the Austin Area Amateur Radio Club. Yay! We're doing field day again at the Morrow County Horsorical... Horsorical... Horsorical County. Yeah, you County. yeah <laughs> that place. County at the Morrow County Fairgrounds. Uh, this is what the fifth or fourth year we've been there oh, for field day. Yeah, at we least also, four. We also help them out with the fair we set up in the communication building they have there. With the, it's a telephone museum with a lot of neat old equipment for communication. Um, we help them out during the fair with parking on Saturday. So we got a good relationship with them. Um, we'll shoot quick to a video here. Yep. Uh, shot around the ground and what's going on. So. The Austin Area Amateur Radio Club held field day this year at the Moore County Historical Society. We operate out of the Pioneer Building. We had our tower trailer fully assembled, ready to go, tri-bander beam along with the VHF beam on top, and an 80 and a 40 meter dipole. We'd like to thank the Moore County Historical Society for allowing us to operate out of the Pioneer Building. This is our fifth year of operation. The Historical Society has a number of buildings, artifacts, in one section of the Moore County Fairgrounds. If you're ever in the area, stop in to see these artifacts from early days of Moore County to present. Once field day began, KD0TLJ Joyce, along with Mary KB0SVG, were running the FT99 way and the logging software. Carl. WA0RLI was running the club's HF rig. Behind the Pioneer building, we have parking for the operators. There's room to set up any dipoles and other types of antennas. We have a small area that you can actually camp overnight if you have an RV or a tent. KB0SBM John is helping a club president, Mike, KC0YQU, operating and logging the software. New member Rob is running the HF rig. Like any good field day, food is a plenty. This year we had all the members bring a dish to pass for a good old-fashioned potluck. As you can see, there was a good selection of food. While everybody was getting a quick bite to eat, TLJ Joyce, along with Chris, were trying to log a few calls in and try to get ahead of the game. Club CW Master, KA0RMP, Dean, arrived with his normal glory. As you can see from the video, we had a lot of uh, people there. We had 17 operators at one point, club members, um, a couple of visitors, a couple of young kids. Uh, yeah, we had a good good turnout. A couple so. of strange people off the street wondering what the heck that big tower was outside there. So, um, for a small club like the Austin is, we had uh, quite a few contacts uh, throughout the night. Uh, we were a little concerned when we were setting everything up. The bands were pretty well down. Really down, yeah. We were, you know, we're worried about not having a good time, but at one o'clock here in the central part of the country, everybody it hopped on up. the radio and it, <laughs> it came alive. We uh, did a couple of different things this year. Uh, we took Joyce's uh, Heil Pro headset along with the headphones. You use that during the uh, competition. Oh, it really helped it out. It cut down really the room good. noise so you could actually concentrate on the uh, calls. Uh, there were so many people on the bands at one point. You'd put a call out and you'd have like four or five people piled on top of each other. Or they were, you would have somebody trying to squeeze in between your frequency and the next guy over, so we're getting a little cross modulation. Oh, Once yeah, there was done. a lot of cross modulation. I don't know, it's cross modulation. Let's just say it was a, the bands were tight in this area. Yep. Uh, headphones work good. Uh, Carl, uh, one of the operators, he went back home and picked up a pair of headphones for the club's uh, HF rig, and he was surprised how much they helped out. Later on in the evening, when uh, our DX expert, um, RMP. Yep. He uh, was surprised how much it helped out. Dean is probably, he was in the military, actually in the Air Force communication for 20 some odd years, and boy, he could just fly on the paddle. Oh, he just to go and, it, I think it was when we went to register all this stuff, it was three minutes in between each one. So within three minutes, he had all the information and was on to the next person. So it was amazing. <laughs> the other, other item we tried this year worked real good with the logging software. The logging software that for contacts that Joyce bought, she bought yes. the whole suite uh, from these people. 
that uh, had other programs in there. One was for a field day uh, week weekend. Uh, we use that up there, and being tied in with the FT 991A, it would auto fill a lot of the spaces in the um, form. The only thing you got to do is put the call sign, the section, no, designator, and the section, section the state. Yeah. Then it would fill the rest in. We also had some paper forms printed out so the operators who worked on stations that weren't connected to the radio could fill it out. And we had a couple of guys use their own forms or just a blank sheet of paper. Uh, then throughout the day, we were at night, we were uh, key stroking that in when the main Trying station was gone down. Yeah, yeah. Then we were tearing down the next day. In the past, Carl made a comment the last couple of years it would take two to three weeks of key stroking in all the uh, contacts in the form, sending it off to the ARRL. They would kick it back sometimes with corrections and send it back in. It would take you know, up to three weeks to get your contacts in. We, uh, at the it's end of the competition, it was raining, so we all took a break. We started keystroking that in. We had a group of people help us out on that. Uh, then it quit raining. We tore down the tower and put everything away, ready for Jay to take it back to the uh, resting spot for the tower trailer. Uh, we stopped by the local Dairy Queen, got a bite to eat. <laughs> we had to have that blizzard. Yep. We should have Dairy Queen up. Us, you know? Yeah, we should. We really should. And uh, when we got home, we had an email about six o'clock on uh, Sunday night uh, from the ARRL stating that the you know confirmation of the uh, entry, they gave us the total of the number of contacts, bonus points, you know, total score. That's we did all. well for being a little club. So you know, it, it, any club out there, take a good look. It doesn't have to be the software we have, but any logging software. I know there's some free ones out there on the net for contesting it. Really makes it a lot more enjoyable well you are operating uh, we had two people one running the radio one running on the computer both had head, headphones or headset on and as you would be keying in the, the call sign the uh, software would tell you if you had a duplicate or not uh, we didn't run into that much till sunday morning yep then um, we started duplicating because we had several different people working the radio yeah. so you might have not recognized it because you hadn't worked them but somebody else had yeah. so so like i said well you know and also on the if you do the paper forms uh, standardize your forms. We had, you know, the call sign, uh, the section, the designator, the state, you know, all the time and frequency laid out in a certain order. And the guys are doing uh, blank sheets of paper. They would have a different order. It just made it more difficult when you were keystroking it in. Because so. you had to figure out their their system, and then you were fine after that. So. Yeah. Then make sure everybody's using the same time, uh, preferably UTC. Yeah. If you want to have a good laugh see a bunch of old people trying to add local time up to UTC. It was, it was quite, hilarious. It was quite <laughs> enjoyable. So. I should have shot video of that. That would have been a good Yes, one, that so. would have been really good. So. <laughs> what is that? The new math? Oh, shot. You know? <laughs> but, it was hilarious. Uh, the meal was good. We did a potluck this year again. We've done one of those in the past. Yeah, it's been a while since we yeah. have. So Everybody bought a good plate, you know, something to pass. So everybody had a, a very, you know, nobody went away hungry. No, no. Um, and oh, I put a lot of stuff back in the motorhome because we stayed overnight. And the next day when everybody came back, I took the food back out and warmed it up cleaned and, it all out. <laughs> yeah, warmed it up and it was gone. Yeah, I mean, there was, was nothing left. So, so it, uh, it, it, everybody had a, like I said, Everybody got well fed for all the amount of work we did. It was a good, good th thing to do. So. Oh yeah, it was good. You know, we had a little bit of rain, not bad. We thought we were going to have big storms. We wouldn't be able to go on the air. So I was tickled that it was just a little bit of rain. So that wasn't so bad. So on that, hope everybody had fun. And if you've never been to Field Days, give it a try. Even if you aren't a ham, just go try it. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> Joyce has some T-shirts made up for uh, KB Zero S. BG and herself, KLJ. Yep. Uh, KB0, SPM, John and myself were the tech support. Oh, yes, they were. So, and they even got them glittered a little bit. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather have rainbows on mine. Can I get rainbows and unicorns next year? Sure, we'll get you rainbows so. and unicorns next year, dear. Like I said, it was a very enjoyable field day. Weather wasn't the greatest, but we, you know, you struggle on through it. You know, like the normal woes and drama of field day. All in all, we all had a good time. Yep, we looking, did good. Looking forward for winter field day. So. And we used our safety with our tower. We did yeah. well. Yeah, nobody got injured. Nope, nope. We weren't falling all, you know. It was a lot of fun. Um, next big item we got on our list is the 4th of July parade at the Austin, Minnesota. We'll be up there, the club will be putting out uh, operators along the parade route, uh, assisting the ch local chamber of commerce. 
Uh, we kind of set up a small net in case somebody gets injured or lost kids or we try to keep the parade units together every once in a while to get somebody that slows down too much. We have a normal amount of space in between them and extra larger spaces for the, the Shriners with the go-karts, motorcycles and the dragon. Yeah. So. Yeah, we kind of got it down to a system now. So, uh, yeah, I'll be not quite sure where they're going to have me. They're not going to have me at the end of the parade anymore. So, no, I'm not the mean old man at the end of the parade. Joyce will be walking or marching in the parade yep. with the alumni band. Yep, so that we, should be fun. We so. may stick a GoPro camera on her and just to get some footage of that to see how long it lasts. <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Clip it to your cat or to your collar. Not on the symbols, though. That'd be too much for us. Yeah, so. I think that'd be too much motion for you. <laughs> So, seven threes. On that, be sure to like, share, tell your friends and neighbors and other hands. If you heard it, be sure to hit the little bell. Uh, get the notification when we put out new uh, videos. We uh, got a couple of videos just kind of sitting there in the can. We'll probably put those together after the fourth weekend. Uh, get them out then on the, some of the improvements we've done to pool here. So, yeah, we'll get that done, and I hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye.